come from Luke 1, verses 78 and 79. By the tender mercies of God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and to the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Hymn of Adoration, we gather together, number 559, the new hymn. Uh, 
I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule without an understanding, which must be curbed with bit and bridle, else it will not keep with you. Many are the pains of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds him who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. May God have a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Our core response, open my eyes. I love the sisters. 
But every once in a while, it's good to have a brother standing by my side. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brother. When he says good morning, he says, Good morning. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Oh, by the way, um, good news. My, my brother's home. He came home from the hospital on Friday. No, on Wednesday. Well, he Wednesday. got his wish. Huh? <laughs> he got his wish. He did. He got, he got his wish. He came home on Wednesday. You know, they let him go home. Couldn't believe it. But he's home, and, and we're thankful that he is home. Uh, also, um, fall is back. Can you believe how from August right into the next day of September, all of a sudden it just got chilly? Mm -hmm. I mean, it just fell off just like that. I mean, I've never seen, you know, normally it's warm until mid-October. Mm -hmm. Not this year. We're going to have cold winter this year. So be prepared. Amen? Yeah. And by the way, we've all heard about the, um, the passing of uh, Supreme Court, Court Justice uh, RGB, RBG, and well, we're going to have some tumultuous times ahead of us, so we need to keep this country in our prayers. We've actually lost a lot of people, a lot of really good people this year, along with uh, uh, John Lewis and others, so uh, what we need to do is we need, really need to keep this country in prayer, and those of us who our prayer warriors, we know what we need to pray for. Amen? Amen. Does anyone have a praise report this morning? I know God has been good to me, and if he's good to me, I know he's been good to you. Anyone have a praise report this morning? Really? Do I have to come down here with a microphone? <laughs> huh? Is that what I got to do? Yes, yes, I do, I do. We had a, um, our family had a couple of birthdays this week, so all, September is just as busy as August. Okay. All right. <laughs> so my cousin's wife and their daughter um, each had a birthday, so it was really good to, uh, to celebrate life. Amen. <laughs> to celebrate the continuance of life. That's always a blessing. Um, and also to uh, celebrate the fact that, you know, that our officials are, you know, trying their best to keep our children safe. Mm. Oh, okay. They did push the school back a little bit. Okay. Like I said, it's all to keep them, keep everyone safe, and that's what we wanted. It may not be, of course, in some cases, the best environment as we protect physical health. Yes. We have to still be conscious of mental health. Yes. Because that, too, is just as important. But we're just very thankful that, you know, that, that they're pushing, and, and, you know, it's an attempt to keep everyone safe. It may be different for us. One day I was on the bus, and I had the mask on. It was really hot. And I said, oh my goodness, is this going to be how life is going to be? Then I had to stop myself. I said, at least you have life. Amen. So Amen. you have to sometimes Amen. stop yourself and say that. But Amen. yeah, it's just, Amen. you know, just, just, just um, um, you know, just to thank God for every day. Everyone wants to rush to 2021, but we were eager to get out of 2019, and here we are. So <laughs> just praise God for every day that you're here, you're healthy, you have your family, you have your friends. So. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Amen. You know, I, I, I love hearing that because, you know, instead of seeing the glasses half empty, you see the, the glasses half full. It's, it's almost full. It's half full. It's not half empty. It's almost full. You know, so that's a, that's a good attitude to have. Amen. Anyone else have a praise report this morning? Yes, ma'am. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. And another thing I'm going to say this morning is that we have to be thankful for our church doors. Okay? Yes. And Elder Boy, Elder Chance, Elder Trot, Reverend Williams, last but not least. Thank you. We all have to give them the honor and the glory because they are working behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Elder Ruff and Elder Gone, everybody. Yes, Amen. Elder Gone, I forgot. And Elder Ruff. Okay. And we come here every Sunday, and the church door is open. A lot of churches are bigger than ours, and yet still, they are still closed. So let's give God the honor and the glory we can meet together. We can breathe and hug again, but you remember the days when you, whatever you can do for anybody, you do it because there are a lot of people who can't even see each other now, and they are mourning. So let us give God mm. the glory. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you walk with the Lord in the light of his word, 
What a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he'll abide with us still. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust. Praise God. Amen. 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 Anyone else have a praise report this morning? Yes, ma'am. It's always a blessing to be here among um, my church family. And I am so thankful that um, my family is doing well. They always have some crisis going on. Mm. But God is just um, sending out his healing power among all of them. Yes. They're getting better. Um, there's different situations. Um, they're just being blessed. And I am so thankful for that because this way I don't have to lay awake so many nights and wait. Can't go to sleep because I'm worried about them. Mm -hmm. I can't fix the problem. Yes. But I'm, um, I don't know, my, I, my faith is that God, I know God is going to do it. He's the only one that can take care of it. Okay. But sometimes our mind just um, think that we can't. Mm. We can't let go. Amen. But I thank God that uh, He's blessing us all, not only my family, but friends around and um, church family. And, um, like I hadn't heard from Miss Holly in so many years. Mm. And it's so good to know that she's still around. She doesn't live that far from me, but I never see her or hear from her. Okay. So it is, it's just nice to be able to uh, hear things from people mm -hmm. who, are, who are sick. Okay. And, uh, and by, by, the, by the way, if, if you can give me her phone number, okay, I'll call her, okay, and I'll make sure that we send the services to her as well. Okay, uh, you know, I have no uh, contact with these people, so, you know, this way if you send me their names or their email addresses or phone numbers, you know, this way I can send them something or I can communicate with them. I'm not sure if this uh, room has the number, because the only number that I have is the one I know. Well, whoever has it, it whoever it. has it, whoever has it, just, you know, give it to me and we can we can uh, contact them and we can actually keep them as part of the fellowship, amen? Mm -hmm. okay. We, we yeah. want to keep them as part of the fellowship, so if they can't come to the service, at least they can watch it at home, so. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else have a uh, praise report this morning? Anyone? This has got to be the first time that that, that lady back there, uh, Elder Houston, doesn't have a word to say. Elder Houston, you don't have anything to say today? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Anyway, God bless you all this morning. We are going to move on to prayers of the people. Uh, does anyone have a prayer request today? By the way, uh, I know that I missed Iceland's uh, Carter's name on here, and we will put her name on the uh, prayer list next week. And also, um, if you have... Anyway, anyone have a prayer request? I'm thinking in my head. Anyone have... No one has a prayer request? Oh, uh, Mr. Ruff. Oh, the Ruffin family, okay. Let me see you being out there, you know? <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, the, family, the family of Desmond Williams, Desmond Williams, um, they laid him to rest um, yesterday. So just keep the family in prayer. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you once again, Father, asking you to help us, to help us with the things that we're suffering, to help us with all that's going on in this world, to 
just for us to know God, that you're there, and that you'll be able to uh, help us in, in all that's going on. Father, we pray, Lord, this morning for uh, those who are on the sick list. We're praying for our brother Philip uh, Drake's today. We're praying, God, that you will bless him today. We're praying for Edna James today. We're also praying that you will bless her as well. We're so thankful, God, that we actually spoke with Edna the other day, and she sounds cheerful, and she was all right. We also spoke with uh, Philip Drake's the other day as well, and we pray, God, that uh, he continues to come bless. We pray, Father, that he continues to be encouraged. We're praying today, Father, for uh, Everett Rome today. We're praying, God, that you'll continue to help him, Lord, as, as he is uh, getting better every each and every day. My brother Selwyn, we, we're thankful for the praise report that he is finally home. We pray, Father, that he will listen to his caregivers and get better really soon. We're praying for my sister Beverly. We're praying, God, that uh, she will uh, get healthy and get back to her old self. We're also praying for Clarice Durant today. Touch her right now, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And let us not forget about Helen Mitchell. We're praying for her. And we're also praying for uh, Miss Terry Collier. And Father, we're praying for Iceland Carter as well. We pray, God, that you will touch this wonderful sister. Lord. We pray, God, that you will bless her in a special way. Touch her right now, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And Father, let us not forget about the Ruffin family. We ask God that you might bless each and every one in his family, Lord. And we ask God that you continue to encourage him and, and help him with his faith. We're praying for the family of Desmond Williams today. We're praying, Father, that you will help them, Father, as uh, they have uh, just lost uh, uh, Desmond, Father. We pray, Lord, that you'll continue to encourage his family and help them. The Bible says that weeping may endure for, for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Touch this family, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we're also praying for uh, Nancy Rodriguez today. We hear, Father, that she's sick. She's suffering with uh, diabetes and something else, but her condition is very, very serious. So, Father, we pray for healing on her body in the name of Jesus. Father, we're praying for the Burbank family today the Jervis family and the Black family, and also for little Zachary. We ask God that you might bless this wonderful family, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Touch them right now, O oh God. We're thankful, Father, we spoke with Jody today, Father. We're thankful that she's doing okay, her and the baby. Bless them right now, Father, over in uh, Pennsylvania. We're praying for the Rome family. Let us not forget about this wonderful family today. Father, we ask, Lord, that you touch each and every one of them. Help them today. In Jesus' name. We're also praying for the Born family today. We ask God that you might uh, continue to bless this family as well. Touch Merlin and touch Elder Born in Jesus' name. And let us not forget about the Trot family. We ask God that you might bless them today. The Trot family and the friends. Touch them all today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let all God's children say, Amen. 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 Come on, let's give God some praise today. You know, you have to forgive me on that uh, feeling up to par today, but it's going to get better as the day goes on. Amen? Amen. 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 Um, we got Ella Williams to see. Let's give God some praise for Ella Williams. And by the, by the way, if you, if you look at your announcements um, where it says Upcom upcoming events, it says let us have a conversation on whether we're going to give away turkeys this year. This is something that we need to think about and maybe we can talk about it next week, okay? Now, uh, at this time we normally pass Christ's Peace. I ask that you all please stand. I ask that you all wave a hand at somebody. In another aisle, I ask that you give somebody a virtual hug. If you can't hug them up close, but give them a virtual <laughs> hug anyway. Amen and amen. You know, it's good to have church family that you yes. love. Yes. It's yes. certainly good to have church family that you love and that loves you back. Amen. Can we all please stand? 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, this now and ever shall be, world without King. Amen. Amen. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God, for this time of giving once again. Father, we ask, Lord, that you be a blessing to us again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. By the way, in case I forgot to say it, I want you to give God some praise for Elder Bourne. Elder Bourne is, Amen. you know, she can, she can do it all. She's behind the camera. She can, she can give us uh, encouragement, and, and she's also picking up the tithes and offerings. So God bless her today. Amen. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Come on, somebody. I told Satan to get me behind, cause victory today is mine. Joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy is mine. Joy today is mine. What did we tell Satan? I told Satan to get me behind, cause joy. Peace is mine, peace is mine, peace today is mine. What did we tell Satan? I told Satan to get me behind, cause peace today is mine. I got the victory, victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine. What did we tell Satan? I Get me behind, cause victory today is mine. Come on, let's give God some praise. Can we all please stand? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Father, we thank you for these gifts from these your people. We ask, Father, that you might bless each and every sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Our second uh, scripture reading today comes from the New Testament, Ephesians 5, verses 8 through 14. Ephesians 5, verses 8 through 14.
number 382 in your hymnal.
I found that I couldn't walk without assistance. I had the same problem yesterday and, 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 and again this morning. I had an excruciating pain in my back. I couldn't straighten up. And today my right leg doesn't seem like it wants to do right. Cowboys used to say I got a little hitch in my giddy up. I wonder what had gone wrong and what was to blame. We're always looking for the blame when something happens to us, don't we? I'll thank you. Turn that off, please. We're always looking for somebody to blame or something to blame when we can't when we can't explain what's going on with us. I, I even thought, I said, <clears throat> how can I preach about redemption, salvation, and, and healing if, if I myself also need healing? There is a division of Christians I was talking with the Eurasia today that, 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 that tell you that if something is wrong with you, you ain't really Christian. You shouldn't have this problem. Instead, you should be able to lay hands on your body and be healed because real Christians don't get sick. Real Christians don't have problems. Real Christians don't have any worries. And ministers and preachers and pastors, they're, they're anointed by God and they never get sick. Real Christians. These kinds of Real Christians can be classified as either sanctimonious or uninformed. Some Christians, they, 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 they make a hypocritical show of religious uh, devotion and piety and, and righteousness while not really understanding the true meaning of being Christian. I remember uh, when my friend Donald was alive and I went to visit him over and the uh, Veterans Hospital over here at, uh, in St. Albans. And, and there I saw a man, and, and I thought I recognized him. He, he, he sat in a wheelchair. And even though he was in that wheelchair, he, he, he sat up straight as a board. Almost regal. He, he, he looked regal. Dignified. Come to find out this man was a a well-known bishop from Brooklyn. This man had preached for more than 50 years and, and had an impeccable reputation attached to his ministry. I believe that all of God's people go through stuff. Does anybody here have ever gone through some stuff? Does anybody ever have some pain in their heart and in their problems? We go through stuff. I had a friend of mine passed away two, two weeks ago. His name was uh, Reverend or Pastor Ronald Simpkins, and he preached the, uh, the Friendship Baptist Church over here in Jamaica. And he just passed away. Had a bout with cancer. And, and he used to say all the time, he was also one of my teachers back in the day, he used to say all the time that, he said, Brother Raymond, we're always in three stages of life. We're either about to go into a storm, we're in the middle of a storm, or we're coming out of a storm. Amen. Okay, so, so we're always there in the midst of something. Something is always there. Something is always going to happen. Yeah. Beloved, out of all the challenges thrown at Christianity in modern times, probably the most difficult to explain is the problem of suffering. How can a loving God allow suffering to continue in the world in which he created? For those of us who have endured suffering, this is much more than a philosophical issue. Instead, it's a deep-seated, personal, and emotional one. How does the Bible address this issue? Well, the Bible is startlingly realistic when it comes to the problem of enduring suffering. The Bible devotes an entire book 
to dealing with this problem. We all know the story of Job. We may have talked about him several times. We know that he suffered. We know about all that he lost. Yes, all, all that he lost. Yet, this is once again philosophical because it doesn't touch you and I personally, does it? Somebody else is suffering. This is something that we're reading in the book. What happens when you have pain? What happens when you suffer? What happens when you go through stuff? The story of Job begins with a scene in heaven which provides the reader with the background of Job's suffering. You see, God, Job suffers because God challenged Satan. God challenged Satan. As far as we know that Job and his friends, they didn't know about this. It is therefore not surprising that they all struggled to explain Job's suffering from the perspective of their ignorance. While Job finally rests in nothing but the faithfulness of God and the hope of life's redemption, neither Job nor his friends understood at that time the reasons for his suffering. In fact, when Job is finally confronted by the Lord. Job is silent. He, he says nothing. Job's silent response does not in any way trivialize the pain and loss that he had so patiently endured. Rather, it underscores the importance of trusting God's purposes in the midst of suffering, even when we don't know what those purposes are. Suffering like all human experiences, is directed by the sovereign wisdom of God. In the end, we learn that we may never know the specific reason for our suffering, but we must trust in our sovereign God. That is the real answer to suffering. Beloved, as Christians, we, we suffer. When, when I first started on this Christian journey, I was taught that we are called suffering saints. When we suffer, we show true fellowship with Christ. But that is only if we suffer for Christ. The pain and suffering of life has little to do with his fellowship, but it does have to do with our relationship and our trust in God. The pain and suffering of life. If we trust in him, then we can be assured that our suffering is justified. If we believe that, that God is truly sovereign, that there is nothing for us to worry about. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. Another example of suffering is in, in the Bible would be the story of, of Joseph in the book of Genesis. We know that Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers. In Egypt, he was indicted on false charges and thrown into prison. He did absolutely nothing wrong, but he was thrown into prison. As a result of Job's suffering and endurance, by God's grace and power, Job is later promoted to be governor of Egypt, second only to Pharaoh himself. Joseph now finds himself in a position to make provision for the nations of the world during a time of famine, including his own family and, and the same brothers who sold him into slavery. The message of the story is, is summarized by, 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 by Joseph addressed to his brothers. You'll find that in Genesis chapter 15, 19 through 21. And what he said to his brothers was this. He said, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. To accomplish what is now being done, and which is the saving of lives. It doesn't matter what you're trying to do to me. Hallelujah. Because God had his hand in life. It doesn't matter that you don't like me. Because God still loves me. Mm -hmm. Romans 8.28 contains some comforting words for those that are doing hardship and suffering. It says, we know that all things, God works for the good for those who love him. Yeah. Who have been called according to his purpose. Amen. Beloved, in his providence, God orchestrates every single event in our lives every suffering, every temptation, every sin to accomplish both our temporal 
and eternal benefit. Sometimes when we're hurting and we feel lost, God may have a great good to accomplish through our suffering. I don't know, I look at people like, uh, like, like Robin Tudy. Okay, Robin Tudy has a problem walking and stuff like that, but you know, it doesn't stop her from getting around, does it? No. You know, and, and while she's getting around on that cane, she calls it, she's preaching to everybody she runs into. Yeah. You, you think about Barbara McGriff. Barbara McGriff had a, had, had a, had a liver transplant. Kidney. Kidney transplant. Same thing. Kidney, liver, what's the difference? <laughs> I, I like to eat them both. <laughs> but she had a kidney transplant. And, 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 and the thing is, is that she goes back to the place where she had the, where she used to do dialysis, and she's preaching to those folks. Amen. So our suffering is not always in vain. There's a purpose and a plan to everything, including yes. your suffering. Yes. Sometimes we you may be going through something so that you might be able to help somebody else. Isn't that what happened with Joseph? He went through all that suffering so that he could save a multitude of people, including his own family. Maybe your pain isn't about you. Maybe your suffering isn't about you. Maybe it's about God's plan. David and doing much suffering in his time, and, 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 and this is reflected in many of his writings, collected in the book of Psalms. In Psalm 22, we, we hear David's anguish when he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from my words, of my groaning. You see, David didn't always hear from God. When we don't hear from the Lord, do we worry? Are we afraid that he doesn't hear us? Mm -hmm. David says, every day I call you, my God, but you do not answer. Every night I lift my voice, but I find no relief. Yet you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our ancestors trusted in you and you rescued them. They cried out to you and you saved them. They trusted in you and you were never disgraced. In other words, if you did it for them, how come you can't do it for me? You did it for them, do it for me. Sometimes, the seeming separation from God gives us the will because we don't always hear from Him. But in His separations from us, are we separated from Him or is He really separated from us? That's what we really need to think about. Maybe it's not his separation from him. Maybe it's our separating from him. Am I making my mind clear there? Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Yeah. David goes on to say, but I am a worm, not man. I am scorned and despised by all. Everyone who sees me mocks me. They, they sneer and they shake their heads saying, is this the one who relies on the Lord? Yeah. Then let the Lord save him. Mm. If the Lord loves him so much, let the Lord rescue him. I'm sure it was a mystery to David why God didn't intervene and end his suffering and pain. It was a, it was a mystery to him. But God, as enthroned as the Holy One, the praise of Israel, God lives in heaven where all is good, where there is no weeping and no fear, where there is no hunger and no hatred. What does God know? about what humans endure. That's what we may ask. But David goes on to complain. He says that dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men has enriched, encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People stare and glow at me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. I know somebody's catching this. Is somebody catching this? Doesn't it all sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Beloved, during our suffering, if we wonder if God has abandoned us, it feels like he has not answered our prayer. Sometimes it feels like we're on our very own. Mm -hmm. David felt like that, yet he cried out to God. Yeah. 
He continues in faithful prayer and supplication. Do we continue to cry out to God? Do we continue to pray? Even when we don't hear from Him? Shouldn't we? But God did answer David. It, it, it took centuries later, but he did answer David. David received his, his answer roughly a whole millennium later. A descendant of David, a, a man by the name of Jesus, was killed on a hill called Calvary. On that cross, Jesus suffered the shame of his forefather David. Christ's hands and, and, and his feet were pierced. The Lord's garments were divided among his enemies. Christ was stared at and, 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 and ridiculed. And in fact, Christ uttered the same words that David uttered when he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Here he identifies himself with the suffering of David. Christ, the eternal Son of God, in whom the fullness of God dwells, has lived on earth as a human being, and has endured hunger, thirst, temptation, shame, persecution, sickness, bereavement, betrayal, mockery, injustice, and even death. Therefore, he is in a position to fulfill the longing of Job. When Job said, if only there was someone Only there was someone who could talk for us. To lay his hands upon us both. Someone to remove God's rod from me. So that his terror would frighten me no more. Then I would speak up without fear of him. But as it now stands with me, I cannot. Christianity is... The only worldview which can consistently make sense of the problem of evil and suffering, beloved. If we serve a God who lived on this earth and endured trauma, if he endured temptation, bereavement, torture, hunger, thirst, prosecution, and even execution, the cross of Christ can be regarded as the ultimate manifestation of God's justice. When asked how much God cares about the problem of evil and suffering, the Christian God can point to the cross and say, I care that much. Christ experienced physical pain as well as the feelings of rejection and abandonment. He suffered the same suffering as many people who know the bitterness of isolation, pain, and anguish. Today, beloved, you may wonder why you're experiencing pain. Why am I suffering? Why is God allowing me to go through this, Brother Davis? Let me remind you of this scripture once again. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. For God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. Beloved, we may not see it now, but it's going to work out for our good. Amen. The same God who takes away the same sins of the world will take away our pain, even if we have to wait until we get to glory. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's give God some glory. <laughs> Invitation on him, O Master, let me walk with you. 357.
verse 4. Father, even when we run into our enemies. 
We ask, Father, that you might not just bless us, but bless our households and our house and all the things that you have given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now unto him that's able to keep us from falling and able to present us faultless in the presence of his glory. The only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and dominion, both now and forevermore. Let us all sing. Amen. 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 Let the church sing. Amen. Let the church sing. Amen. God has spoken. Let the church sing. God bless you, everyone. See you next week. God bless you. Who's going to open that?